What's up, beautiful, lovely people out there? It's Sid here, and today I'm going to be talking about the dangerous, dysfunctional relationship between the narcissistic father and his daughter. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. The narcissistic father looks at his daughter as literally just property. And that's pretty much how the narc father or narc mother looks at all of their children. But the reason why this one is so different is because a lot of times if you are the daughter of a narc father, it's very hard to understand what's happening to you and understand it for what it is simply because you are a girl, you are a female, and if your father is present in your life, that's already something that people want to celebrate. Just the fact that you have a father in your life. They just overlook everything. No matter how he treats you or what he does to you, he's there. And so many people don't have their fathers in their life that you should just be grateful that he's there. At least you don't have, you know, quote unquote, daddy issues. So that's a problem there because people start to not pay attention to the way you're being treated and just celebrate the fact that he's there. And then they look at it like, well, you have this person here to protect you, to save you from the world, to guide you. You are a female, you know, you're this lonesome little lamb out here in this great big world, and at least you have this big gigantic wolf to protect you. So it's one of the reasons why you start to question your own sanity is what is happening right in front of me is it really what's happening or is it just me you know not allowing my father to protect me so when you are the daughter of a narc father you're not allowed to grow up you're not allowed to be your own person you're not allowed to have your own identity you're not allowed to do anything that they do not feel that you should be doing all in the name of I'm your father, I'm here to protect you. And that is a very good way of how you're manipulated and you're made to believe that it's out of protection and it's out of love for you. So the narc father sees everything that the child does as a threat to him if it means her being independent from him so if she wants to learn how to drive if she wants to get a job if she wants to move out and the biggest one is if she starts dating someone he literally sees this guy as a threat to him as someone that will be taking away his narcissistic supply because remember, you're not even looked at as a person. You're looked at as an object, someone for them to use and manipulate. So I have a little story that I want to share. When I was 15 years old and all my friends were in driver's ed after school and learning how to, you know, the basics of driving, I was not allowed to attend. There was never any real reason why I wasn't allowed. It was just, no, what I say goes, what you want doesn't matter, and it's no. You know, there was nothing in particular that I had to do after school. There was no chores. I didn't have to babysit anyone. It was just a simple, flat-out no, and it was never explained. Okay, fine, whatever. So when everyone's turning 16, 17, and they're driving their cars to school, maybe they brought their moms or they have their own, I had to resort to public transportation, which is fine. I'm only in high school. Okay, so now I graduate. I turn 18. I'm working. I'm going to school. I'm trying to juggle this and that. I want to learn how to drive. My father refuses to teach me. And side note, he was the only one in the household who had a car and who knew how to drive, even though I was the youngest of four children and my mother was there, which was not done by coincidence. It was not done by accident. He did that on purpose as a way to control the situation. So there was a lot of places that I couldn't go, a lot of opportunities I missed out on because you're limited when you are on public transportation. So at 18, I was working at a fast food restaurant, and so I wanted to learn how to drive. 
there was no attempt there was no help any request i made or if i asked could i learn how to drive it was always no 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 once again never any real reason as to why so i saved up my money and i went to driving school and i got my license now i'm happy i got my license i'm 18 there was you know sort of like this down look upon me once they realized I had my license. Nobody congratulated me. Nobody said good job. It was just like, you know, almost like turning their nose up at me because I had my driver's license. So now it came time for me to get a car. So I asked my father, who is a very smart person. He knows all about the financing world, APRs, all that work, you know. So I'm looking to this man to guide me when it comes to purchasing a car or my very first house, or moving out in contracts. How does all this stuff work? But as a defense to me growing up and becoming more independent, he decided that he just wasn't going to tell me anything. You know, you're going against my wishes. You're going against what I want you to do. So if you want to learn about all this stuff, you figure it out. That was basically the message that he was sending to me. And so I was looked at as this rebellious child just because all I wanted to do was actually grow up and do normal, regular things that 18-year-olds do. So I saved up my money and I went to a rinky-dinky dealership who basically, you know, took advantage because I didn't know what I was doing and I got sold a bad deal. Prior to me going to the dealership, of course, I asked my father to accompany me. He told me no. And any other family member that attempted to help me, he stood in the way. Not only would he not help me, he wouldn't allow anyone else to help me. So when I came home with the car, of course, you know, I was criticized. What's wrong with you? Why would you get that car? How much are you paying? You're being ripped off. Your APR is so high. How much did you put down? You know, I was looked at as this big dumb idiot that went to this horrible dealership and just basically let them rob me. But it's like, you could have prevented this. You could have helped me as my father. You could have guided me. But because you did not want me to have a car that bad, you allow me to go over there and get that raw deal. But of course, he's taken absolutely no responsibility for this. He sees no fault in this whatsoever. I'm just looked at as this defiant child. So that is just a small story, a small story of how, you know, narcissistic fathers treat their daughters. So... If I wanted to do anything against him, if I didn't have the willpower to just push through and say, I'm going to get a car, I'm going to get my license, I wouldn't be driving. And that is the way that he wanted it to be. He didn't want me to drive. He didn't want me to be able to have control over where I went. He wanted me to be limited to where the bus would take me. And he was totally okay with that. So that pretty much explains a little bit of the dynamic of the narcissistic father. Anything that you do that is going to speak independence, he is totally 100% against. And he's either going to present it to you in a, you know, jealous type of way, a sarcastic way, a way of putting you down, whatever tactic he can use to get you to shy away from being your own person, he is going to use it and he is going to run with it. Okay, guys, so that's just one of my videos about the narcissistic father and the daughter. Thank you guys so much for listening over and out.